<laughs> Alright, now we got the Ricky Bobby out of the way. Hey everybody, Ivan Cruz, Valkyrie Combat, here to finally get your review done on your SIG 911 Scorpion, alright? I am going to try to talk to you guys like you're not an iPhone in my face, so bear with me, alright? So I'm going to start off with a lot of the... Basically the, cha the differences between this and a GI model. I happen to be a really f hardcore 911 guy, I know. Uh, you can call me a FUD if you'd like, but I embrace it. So, I have, this is not a traditional, but more of a, what you would call a normal 911, right? You can see the lines on this, a little bit rounded off, just to give you kind of a comparison right away. I'm going to have Greg put some really cool, science-y, technologically advanced pictures up here of a GI model and then we can go over differences all right so this thing here man the right off the bat you can notice that the slide profile is way different way 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 different you have a really thick slide it's more of a sig style than a 9 to 11 but some people do dig that kind of stuff and if you're not a traditionalist you can de definitely roll with it but you will have a little bit more of a challenge finding holsters that are meant for traditional 9 to 11 so bear that in mind this is a commander length slide I dig it because they're still reliable. If you go any shorter than this on, the, on this particular style of gun, you're going to get really, really unreliable results. This one here are f awesome for by 1911 standards. I've shot this one. I didn't want to beat it up on you guys, so maybe I shot a few hundred rounds. And you would get your slide slowing down if you don't put any lube on it in about two to three hundred rounds. So bear in mind, you definitely want to give this more maintenance than you would your plastic guns. Uh, another thing on this particular model, you have a threaded barrel, so you can put your compensators, <laughs> suppressors, anything you need on it. And if I go stay stick on the slide, I am going to go over your sights on this particular gun. You have SIG light three dot night sights. My personal preference, I don't dig them. There are way too much going on and they're huge sights, so you can't really be precise with them. With that said, they, these are Novak cuts, so you can make them anything you want. They are very, very popular cuts, so you can find them. All right, so we got that. Extractor. On your extractor, again, old school style, you are going to have a, let me see if I can get in there, if you can see it with my little baby hands there, an internal extractor, all right? There's pros and cons to both. I'm gonna go over the pros and cons of yours. This is an external extractor, so it's way more modern. You have spring tension on it, so you don't have to tune it. That's your pro. Your con is that when you want to get this thing out, you need to drift out a pen out of it and then replace or tune your extractor. All right, so that's gonna be some armor stuff right there. All right, and then if I go down one, actually, I'm sorry, let's go back up one. We have front serrations here for your cool press checks, and you have really aggressive serrations in the back. For your manipulations all right on your hammer instead of having that little dinky <laughs> gi hammer you're going to have a the term for this again guys yeah i don't know uh the hole in the hammer you know makes basically lightens it up and then it's kind of a competition style so you get a nice lighter trigger press and you also have a beaver's tail style safety here that way you protect you meaty mother <laughs> from getting bit by that hammer right right there so that's definitely a plus, and you have a memory bump right there to make, help make sure you get that good grip on it and, dis and disengage your safety because that's a big deal. If you can't get a grip on this gun, it's not going to fire for you. All right, I'm going to go down a little bit now, so I'm going to go to your frame. Again, you have a lot of features for this style of gun here. You have a, a little bit wider than normal slide stop or slide release, whatever you're using it for, right? Traditional style would be closer to the frame like this one 
So this one gives you a little bit more to purchase or, you know, hit if you need to, all right? So if I'm a right-handed shooter or right-handed, <laughs> it's nice that I'm wrong-handed, I'm gonna shoot, magazine comes up, I hit it with my support hand thumb. If I'm a lefty or wrong-handed, I can get my magazine in and hit with my trigger finger, all right? So it kind of helps out with both. Uh, let me see what else you got on this frame here. You got G10 grips, um, they're pretty cool. Uh, they look aesthetically pleasing and they work on your frame here you have aggressive front checkering so that's a really good feature right there some people spend a lot of money on getting their shit done up by gunsmiths and that's expensive all right uh, let me see here your mainspring housing is also made of g10 material your grip panels and your sp uh, mainspring housing actually double as a magwell so that's a pretty cool thing too some people drop a lot of money on magwells and uh bear with my f-bombs because we don't have anything to intelligent to say i just swear All right, so what else did I get to here? Because I did a blooper reel, and I'm trying to not to touch on things more than once here. Oh, here we go. You have a flat face trigger. That's all the craze right now. Um, it allows you to get good leverage. doesn't matter where your finger lands on it. You get good leverage, and you can press that trigger evenly and straight to the rear. That definitely, definitely helps. But again, everything's going to come down to practice. Your mag release. This thing has everything I spend money on on my gun. Um, on the mag release, I have an ex extended mag release, all right? For those, those of you that have little hands like this, all right? I'll be in hand model for <laughs> picks if this doesn't work out. So this mag release right here is definitely aids you in getting that mag out because you have more to press. Um, let me see what else can I talk about the external of this thing. Good to go there. FDE finish. Uh, it looks like it's Cerakote, so that's pretty durable on there. I'm going to take this thing apart so you can see the internals of it. This is a Series 80, guys. Um, I don't know if you guys know the difference, but I'll explain real quick if you don't. Series 80 means that they have a striker or hammer safety. You can see that little button there. That thing is a button. It just adds extra pieces to your gun. So when you're pressing this, it's kind of like a Glock where you're pressing it, it's disengaging your slide safety, and then it shoots, all right? These things have been around for 100 years. In my personal opinion, you don't need it. You can actually get rid of it, and it makes it a smoother trigger press. All right, so if I lock this back, we're good. I'm going to take this apart. All right. Watch your pl Watch that. <laughs> watch that cap. I've flung that across the room more than once. All right. And this comes out. This comes out. Spring assembly, there's a couple of different styles now. Um, there's a flat wire springs, which I, which I dig a lot. This has a traditional style spring, nothing wrong with it. You just have to replace them. Um, again, just like anything else, replace them within two, 3,000 rounds and you'll be fine. Um, here we go. We have your, let me see, your slide safety. Everything internal is almost the same except for your extra parts. So if you look at this thing, this is the part that in touches your safety in the slide. Again, this is just all extra parts. Most 911s do not have that, all right? That's just a modern thing for people that want to be more safety conscious. You don't need it. All right, beyond that, I'm gonna put this thing back together. I'm gonna to show you how, show you guys how to avoid what we 911 guys call the idiot mark when you're putting these things back together. I've scratched up a lot of guns, so bear in mind, hopefully I don't scratch up your gun. All right, so make sure your link is facing in the down position. You want your guide rod with those little, I'm not gonna use any specific terminology. I'll make it really simple for you guys. This little curvy end goes towards the barrel, right? Your barrel link or the circle-y thing, as I like to call it, is going to be pressed up against the back of that, right? So it should look like this if that's cool awesome all right this one you're gonna have to look out for again with that little extra safety piece right there because you can ding the back of your slide with it so i would push that down make sure it's flat put this slide on top of your frame there line them up and i actually like to use gravity with me the angle's not very good but line up your barrel link with that hole right and this is the important part, right? 
And when I say the idiot mark is when you put this piece in there, people tend to scratch it up putting it into place. So I capture it and then I line them up and I try to push up and in. All right, takes a little bit of practice, but it works. And then from there, you want to put your, this is another part I usually fling across the room again. You want your plug, you put it in your spring, on top of your spring, compress, and you want your barrel nut there to go into place. All right, so we do a function test, press, reset, press, and she works. All right, guys, uh, good luck to the winner, or for all of you, rather, and then uh, congratulations to the winner when this actually goes out. You're going to have a little bit of my, uh, my, <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. It's too soon. But yeah, you're gonna, basically, you're going to have a little bit of me with you because I shot this yesterday, guys. All right, so thank you very much, and I'll bring you over to Greg. All right, guys, it's time to pick uh, the winner of this Sig Scorpion that we're gonna give this puppy away to. I'm sorry it's taken us so long to film this video and to uh, figure out who the winner is. Things have been a little bit crazy in the shop lately, uh, as I'm sure you can imagine with everything that's going on in the world right now. Uh, people are panic buying guns and ammo like crazy. Uh, so we've been incredibly busy, but I am sorry that this has uh, taken so long. So I'm gonna turn the camera around here so that you can see how we're gonna figure out who the winner is. So, over here on the left, you'll see that we've got the names of everyone who bought in to this review, uh, which I hope you enjoyed, by the way, and I hope that it was informative as well. Um, and so, we're going to use this random number generator from random.org to select a number between 1 and 48, 48 being the total number of uh, purchases of this review that there were. And they're listed chronologically here in the order in which they came in. So uh, at the top, number one is the very first order that was placed for this review. And then at the bottom is the very last one. So the number that pops up down here when I pick generate will then come over to the this side over here and find that corresponding number there. So anyhow, Without further ado, here we go. Good luck, everybody. 12. Wow, that was quick. I kind of wanted there to be more, you know, something exciting going on there, but it just was like, bam, 12. All right, number 12 is Eric Strauss. Congratulations, Eric. That's awesome. As you guys can see, Eric bought actually a number of, a number of spots, so... Uh, he gave himself a little bit better odds than, than some people. So anyhow, congratulations, Eric. I'll uh, be hitting you up personally here to arrange for us to, to get this thing to you. Um, to everyone else, thank you for participating. Like I said, I hope you got some actual value and some information out of uh, the review. We still have a bunch of them that are uh, available on the website right now. Um, Quite honestly, that mo those might be about the only guns that you can get your hands on here anytime in the near future. All of our distributors and all of the other gun stores that we know are almost completely out of uh, guns and ammo, particularly the cost-effective good guns and ammo. Those disappeared weeks ago. So anyhow, if any of you have any needs in that regard, feel free to hit me up. But again, thank you for participating. Hopefully we can do another one of these here in the near future. And uh, sorry it took so long, but... Uh, Hopefully, at least for Eric, I know it was worth the wait. And uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Be safe out there. Bye. thing before I go um, that I wanted to mention because I, I think it's important. Um, Ivan, I really don't like it when you uh, use that kind of language in these videos, man. We're supposed to be a, a professional company and it doesn't really present the right image. So you, you're really going to have to watch uh, uh, the words you use when you're, you're filming these things. I mean, you can't just say F a bunch of times. You know, you gotta mix it up. Maybe say um, There's a good one. Uh, but you can't say that probably too many times because I think might offend a few people if you're just saying constantly.
Um, so you, you, you really have to watch what you what you say. But, you know, mix it up a little bit, bit man. You can't just say whatever the f you want constantly. You have to say uh, or you know, these are all things that you can, you know, use so that you sound um, a little classier when you're making these videos. So just keep that in mind um, for the next one. So again, everyone, I really appreciate uh, everyone who took part in this thing. I hope you enjoyed uh, watching this review because we really enjoyed making them. It was a ton of fun and uh, hopefully we'll be doing another one of these uh, here in the near future. So I will see you guys later.